hi welcome back to all things pop pop this is my first comic book review i'm so excited i'm gonna be reviewing descender uh, issues one through three today and this is an image comic by writers jeff lemire and dustin nugent so i'm gonna start my review um going issue by issue now there are three issues total first let's start with book one Ooh. We start off on the planet Narada, and it's clearly a very advanced civilization. We meet Dr. Kwan, who is the inventor of modern robotics, and he's woken up being told that there's a crisis going on. There are ships surrounding the planet, and there's a giant robot that they don't know how to communicate with. The robot's eyes go red, and it's clear that it's going for an attack. The next panel we see is 10 years later, and we're on the moon Dirishu. There's a boy who's just woken up. He seems to be confused about his surroundings because everyone around him is dead. He stumbles upon his droid bandit and that's when it first becomes clear that he's not human. This is Tim21 and he's a robot. Tim finds the main computer and learns that humans have destroyed all the robots in retaliation for the harvester attack. Back on the planet Narada, the United Galactic Council is searching for Dr. Kwan. They believe they found a connection between the older model robot he had created and the harvesters. They learn that there's actually a robot that's still active and they want to go and search for it. But on the last panel they realize they're not the only ones looking for him. Essentially the whole system, the United Galactic Council, everything completely changed after that attack. Um, and so the relationship between humans and droids completely changed. There was a moment after the first issue um, that I really, I, I really understood where the humans were coming from because when you have some like such a huge threat that essentially destroys so much of the population, pretty much four fifths of the population died just on Narada alone. And the moment where it's explained that you know it was pretty much a mass destruction of all of these robots, to me that made perfect sense. I'm like, yeah, that's ex <laughs> there was a robot that totally went bonkers and. You don't want that to happen again. That's that's crazy. So totally, yeah, kill them all. I would have done the same. I would have been one of those people that would be like with the pitchfork, like, where are they? <laughs> I need to kill them now. Like, this is crazy. And so that completely changed once I read issue two. Bam. We start off the two with him running away from the bounty hunters while his memory is downloading. He remembers how he was created by Dr. Kwan, and at first Tim had believed that Dr. Kwan was his father, but he was promptly reminded that he was just a robot and sent on his first mission. This is where we learned that Tim was actually created to be a companion to children. We got to see memories of how Tim protected and cared about the family he was with. He felt especially connected to the mother that had adopted him because she treated him just like a regular child. She had been the one that had given him Bandit for his birthday, and that's why it was especially upsetting when he found her dead body. Tim is scared and confused and waits for his plasma bowl to recharge. The bounty hunters are after him, and by the time they finally reach him, he's able to take one of them down with his plasma blaster. However, they get him too, and Tim is critically injured. An old driller robot sees Tim in distress and promptly kills all of the bounty hunters. The second book ends with the old driller robot picking up Tim's broken body and trying to figure out how to fix him. It was just the perfect ending. It was amazing. And I didn't expect it to be as dramatic in the end as it was because already we saw it was already emotionally dramatic when you see, you know, he finds his mother and you see what kind of connection he had to essentially his foster family. And so at the end, when he blasted the dude, I don't like when comics, you know, kind of just injure and don't go all the way. I want people to die. And this guy died off right off the bat. He totally deserved it. And then you have this crazy robot just be like, humans must die and kills them all. I loved it. Like there wasn't anything to not love about this issue. Like from the beginning to the end, to me it was so much better than the first um, issue because the first issue was kind of just introducing you into that world. Again, it was interesting, but it didn't make me necessarily want to know more. This issue definitely, I'm, I can't live my life without this comic anymore. Like this issue, I com completely won me over. I felt bad for the humans in the first comic and then now I feel completely like I'm devastated at what happened to the robots. There was one thing about the first comic where um, once the little droid woke up, it, it changed from population one to two. And I was like, whoa, so robots, how does the robot count as the population? So even then, you know, I'm thinking, you know, in my mindset too, because I don't see robots as equals to human, and maybe eventually they will be. You know, if this, if this comic says anything, they definitely will be. But um, so right there, I was really able to 
um, really understand what the humans were like about. And then now in the second issue, I'm like, whoa, this is, they completely devastated, like the robot community discriminating against them. This is terrible. So finally, we're gonna go to the third book. And this book, again, you have to love the covers of these books. You start the third book and it's like the mouth of a cave and it's actually a robot head. It wasn't until like, um, I looked at the image more closely where Driller, he looks exactly like the robot that attacked everyone in the first comic. So you're like, whoa, are they related? Were they mistaken this whole time thinking that it was like the little robot, the little boy robot? And it really is like, a, a, you know, another type of robot that actually did this. So we see that Driller has taken Tim's body into the cave and he's taken him to try to help him. But there really is nothing he can do. And like, poor Driller, he's like, Driller's stupid. I'm so stupid. I can't help him. And I feel so bad because I'm like, I'm like, no, you're not. You're a smart robot. Yes, you are. I want to like tickle him under the chin. And then, and then you have the little droid um bandit he's like yapping at him and even though um even though tim can understand him perfectly driller can't and driller's like i can't speak robot dog and <laughs> or dog about whatever he says and it's so funny to me he's like i'm not that smart and i was just like don't say that you're smart look at you you're trying to save this little boy and so um right you gotta love driller he is just so funny so meanwhile we're not exactly sure what's happening if because a lot of the panels, they're changing not just places, but they're changing, it's a change in time as well. So we have the spaceship where we have Dr. Kwan and Tes Telsa, <sighs> I was going to call her Tesla, and Telsa. And they're coming for, they're, they're coming towards the moon. They're looking for Tim. And um, then we jump back to, you know, driller holding on to tim trying to find a way to save him but at the same time we have tim in action he's kind of like in the mouth of this cave he's talking to this other robot that he just met who i'm calling eras it could be eras it could be eras i don't know how to say his name we'll say eras um because it's just easier to say or eras so he meets Eras and he's like this totally broken down droid. Like he's missing an arm. He's like chipped away and like every part of him is just broken. And um, he tells him like, hey, come over here. And he's like, where the hell are we? And he's not saying anything really. So in this sequence, we see that then Tim, when he goes into the cave, he ends up finding a huge crowd, like an infinite amount of these broken droids. And they're like essentially like, praising the savior and tins the savior he's like standing kind of at the mouth it looks like a pedestal and he's looking down at the crowd below him and they're saying save us save us only you can save us really interesting and then it's you know you're like whoa you didn't you, they didn't all die okay i guess not and then finally we have telsa and we have dr kwan land and right off they encounter driller and driller's like kill all humans and he attacks them and then he goes down um and they find tim they take him onto the ship and they you know try to revive him and they manage to and then as soon as tim wakes up he's like oh hey dr kwan dr kwan's like whoa you remember me he's like of course yeah i called you daddy essentially he's trying to remember what happened he's like this whole time like he thought he was like in a cave and they're like do you know you can't dream and he's like then where was i because he knows as well as everyone knows that the robots are dead or at least they all should be because that's what they expect they think that they're all dead and then it just leaves you there was he dreaming can tim dream even though he's a robot and i say yes he can dream um really what makes us that different from robots humans like there's shit in here that we don't understand and really they're just like synapses and other terms i don't know but they're just like connections and things talking to each other i mean isn't that what a robot does like it just learns and connects and i don't know whatever i know scientist but but yeah i think tim can dream and there was a moment in the second issue where um his mother put him to bed and she, she was like, do you know, do you want me to put you in sleep mode? And he's like, yeah, maybe I'll dream. And she's like, yeah, maybe you will. And like she kisses him on the forehead and, you know, tucks him in. And that's like so adorable. I think that Tim can dream. Um, 
again, I don't think there's that much difference, especially since he can learn these, um, I don't know if he learns the emotions, but he's able, yeah, you know what, no, he can totally learn the emotions, he, he has this connection with his family, and he loved them, and I think that was so obvious in the first issue, and to think that he can love, but then not dream, you may be able to learn to dream, who knows, I mean, I've been able to manipulate my dreams. So then how is it that maybe, you know, this they don't think this rollback can, you know, like, and we know technology is like so much um, better in this world than it is here. So I think it's very well possible that he could have been dreaming. But again, I think it could also have just been all the robots, like once they knew that the humans were coming for them, they all kind of like uploaded themselves into like this mass computer and have been looking for someone to kind of be their savior. I really love this comic. Issue number one, it really made me want to continue reading, made me want to know more. The stakes were really high, the, the characters were really interesting, and of course the artwork was beautiful. Issue number two completely won me over. Very emotional, as well as then like the ultra kind of violence that happens right towards the end, where you see like people, you know, the hate that the robots have with the humans. Um, and vice versa, the third issue got less enjoyable because it wasn't as emotionally gripping as the second one was, um, but it raised really important questions for the series in general. Um, and I love stories like this because they don't, they're not just telling you a story, they're, they're making you ask questions about yourself. These kind of philosophical questions are really interesting to me when they're, they're, they're raised in things as, like comic books. You know, it just shows you this is a, you can have a great and compelling and deep story in comic books, things people don't take seriously. I love the concept of this comic, really interesting story. So I'm excited for the next issue. I'm so glad that I picked this up. I just saw that on Twitter, someone had recommended it. And I'm like, oh, sure, whatever, I'll, let's do this. And <laughs> one of the best comics I've read in a really long time. It's no wonder that this it has been picked up by Sony to be made into a movie. So that just adds another level of excitement. The, you know, the amount of trust that you have to have in a story for it to then ter be turned into a movie. That says a lot about it. If you have any other uh, suggestions for comic books, I'm always looking for new things to read. So until next time, and thanks again for watching.